So let's talk about how we can determine the rate law using the initial rate method. So the idea is we're going to measure the initial rate experimentally, and we're going to do this with a variety of different initial concentrations. And the simplest way to illustrate this is through an example. And so we'll look at a very simple example of a classic reaction. The example that I'm going to take is the reaction of peroxydisulfate, S2O8 2 minus, in water with iodide ions in water to make two sulfate ions and the triiodide ion. One of the nice things about this reaction as far as the initial rate method goes is that it falls in a, a range of time scales that makes it easy to measure experimentally, the initial rate. And secondly, most of these species are not colored, but the triiodide species is colored, and so we can use the changes in color to measure the changes in concentration and the rate. So what we'll do is we'll vary the initial concentrations and measure the initial rates, and then we'll compare those to try and sort out the order and the rate constant for the reaction. I'm gonna do three experiments, and I'm gonna choose these to make the concentrations most simple as far as analyzing the kinetics. So we'll do this at 25 degrees centigrade. It's important to specify the temperature since the rate depends on temperature. And we'll look at three different experiments, one, two, and three. For each of these experiments, we'll choose a different set of initial concentrations of reactants. Iodide, which we'll measure in moles per liter. Peroxydisulfate, which we'll measure in moles per liter. These are the initial concentrations. And then we'll have the initial rate in molar per second. So I'm gonna choose these experimentally to make the comparisons especially simple. You might not be able to do that in real life. That complicates the analysis, but this will illustrate the basic idea. So let's say we start with an initial experiment where we have 0.08 molar iodide ions, 0.04 molar peroxydisulfate, and we measure an initial rate which turns out to be 12.5 times 10 to the minus sixth. I'm gonna do a second experiment, and in this experiment, I'm gonna hold the concentration of peroxydisulfate the same, and I'm going to decrease the initial concentration of iodide by a half. When I do that, I go and I measure the initial rate, and what I find is it's 6.25 times 10 to the minus sixth. I'll do a third experiment where I keep the iodide concentration the same as I had it in experiment one, but now I have the peroxydisulfate concentration, and what I find is, again, an initial rate of 6.25 times 10 to the minus sixth. Now we're gonna compare these and sort out the order for the reaction and the rate constant. So let's compare the results of these three experiments. If we compare experiment one to experiment two, in this case we held the peroxydisulfate concentration the same, and we decreased the concentration of iodide by one half, and what we found was that the rate decreased by one half. So that tells us that the rate is proportional to the concentration of iodide to the first power, or that this is first order in the iodide concentration. All right, so let's now compare experiments one and three. And in this case, what we did was we held the iodide concentration the same, and we decreased the concentration of 
S208 2 minus by 1 half. And once again, we saw that the rate decreased by 1 half. And so this means that the rate is also proportional to the concentration of S208 2 minus to the first power. So the rate is first order in S208 2 minus. And that means that all together, the rate is proportional to the concentration of iodide times the concentration of S2082 minus. And so we can write that in terms of a rate law. And what you see is from this analysis, we've shown that this is first order in both I minus and S2082 two minus and that the rate law is second order overall. The final step in our analysis involves determining the rate constant itself. We can do this by simply taking our expression for the rate law that we have determined from our initial rate data and rewrite it in terms of solving for the rate constant. We can put in the values of our initial rate and I'm choosing values from experiment two here. I could have used experiment one or three, or you might take an average if you need to. Put in the initial concentrations and notice that we need to put in our units correctly. And if we go through this analysis, what we find is that the value for the rate constant at 25 degrees centigrade is 3.9 times 10 to the minus three inverse molar inverse seconds. And notice that there are units with this rate constant. Those units will vary as the rate law varies.